How are you yeah. feeling after just settling back in from heart stuff, the knee, just all of that? Um, it was good to be out there again and, you know, be out there with my teammates and play. And, um, you know, I think that there's, I mean, I wouldn't say that it was like, it, was, it wasn't all great all the time, but it was just good to be out there. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of room to get better for myself and the team. And I think we're going to, we're going to do that. Hey, Graham, going all the way back to week one in that game, what did you start feeling bad and, and what were the, what was the, uh, feelings like after the game? Um, well, like during the like second series of the game, like I kind of felt weird, like a little bit early, but then like during the second series, I kind of felt that it was, uh, not like normal. Like my, my heart was like kind of beating out of my chest and I felt like I had to like move my pads like away, f like from my chest, to, like make room for it sort of. And then, uh, I didn't really know what it was. I thought it was like maybe like an anxiety attack or something or I, but I've never had one of those before either. So I didn't know what that was. <laughs> and then I thought maybe I'm having an asthma attack because it was a little difficult to breathe. But um, just the, the heart was just going at like a million miles a minute and um, just didn't really know what it was. So just kind of kept playing. And then by the end of the game, we kind of figured it out and I had to go to the hospital. Was, was it just was it was it the same the entire game? Or did it get worse as the game progressed? Uh, it was, I mean, I would say it was probably about the same. Yeah. Were you scared? I wouldn't really say I was scared because I didn't know what, what it was. I mean, I, it's hard to, it's hard to be, I mean, I don't know. I thought I was just, I, at some point I was like, am I just out of shape? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then, um, I don't know. I mean, I talked to, I, I I talked to my dad on the phone when I was going to the hospital and he's like, you know, this is, I mean, it's not super normal for like, you know, somebody your age. And I mean, all the test results and stuff is like, it came back as normal as well. So the, the whole incident in itself is just weird that it happened. But um, I, I wouldn't say that I was scared. I, it was, I don't know. Are, are you pretty confident it's not gonna happen again? Is there some sort of treatment that you've been getting or is it? They just, think it was just hydrate more and I mean yeah, hydrate more make sure you're not dehydrated get good sleep um, use the CPAP that I have for sleep apnea stuff but that's about it if that were to happen again would you take yourself out of the game or would you keep playing like you did in that opener I think I would that's a tough question because they told me that if it happens again I should take myself out just so that nothing bad were to happen with like you know possible like stroke stuff or anything like that so I think that knowing the ram the potential long-term ramifications of it I think I would probably want to get out of that as fast as I could do you have conversations with your brothers about just their you know physical makeup and keep an eye out for stuff like that I guess um I mean I, I've not really. I mean, all of them are younger than me. I think that in, my dad has never had issues with this or anything, so it's just kind of the whole thing has just been odd. They, you said they figured it out. What, what, was, what did they figure out? What was it? Well, uh, it was just AFib. I went into AFib during the game. So, Played one game, sat out, played one game, sat out. Is it, has it been tough to sort of find, find your form and your rhythm after? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's been pretty difficult here for me for the past, you know, for the start of the season here. But um, the fact that I made it through a game and I'm not going to have to sit out now, that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> but it's been hard to get into a rhythm so far. And uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's been hard to get into a rhythm here so far. But um, I'm just looking to, you know, come back this week and have an actual two weeks of of practice and going back and getting back into the game. So I think that uh, that'll just help me out, you know. How much of that continuity with you being there and Dalton being there for a couple of weeks in a row, how much of that help the rest of the offense? I think it would help a lot in situations, particularly where we kind of found ourselves last weekend. And I know that it's not always perfect, but I think that when you get into two minute drills, it gets like, that's like, I would probably say that that's what you get paid for on Sundays. Like that's the hardest possible thing an offensive line can find himself in. Um, so just being able to uh, hold up 
you know, as I said, it's not always perfect. Hold up long enough and make sure that the quarterback has enough time to move the ball down the field. I mean, we were on track to come back and potentially win the game there, you know, tie the game, maybe go into overtime. Um, I think that that's part of it. I think that, um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of forgot I'm where I was going to go. I'm sure you've been part of a lot of games where the offense has nothing going. Fourth quarter, you're down, you start passing, and you're moving the ball, and you start scoring. Do you come out of those games like yesterday saying, why not put it up earlier? Um, I could see why you would ask that, and I think that there are some people who would say yes, but I think that part of a football game in general just also comes to balance. And I mean, I think you do need to run the ball, and I mean, I thought that there were some runs that we had yesterday that were pretty good. I, I think early we had some um, some plays that, you know, they had they had some game wreckers out there. I thought that T.J. Watt had, did a really good job at the beginning of the game stopping some of our runs and stuff. Um, but I don't think that that's a cause to just go and throw the ball, you know, 80 times in a game. I think that in general, um, you know, the, I think that in a two-minute drill, the defense just isn't trying to give up the big play. I think they're giving us, like, a lot of the completions to move the chains and whatnot. So I think that it kind of gives you, like, a false sense of security in the – and just like, why don't we just go two minute the whole game? But I think that that's, I don't think you can do that. Graham, Graham you guys have had as, as many goal to go situations offensively as almost any team in the league, but have had kind of a hard time finishing some of those. What, what do you see from your perspective as things the offense has to do to kind of turn a lot of these kind of good scoring opportunities you're getting into touchdowns? Um, that's a good question. Hmm. Can you ask it one more time, just so I can have more time to think? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly can, if you'd like me to. Yeah, can you? Yeah. <laughs> goal you guys, to go. You guys have had a lot of goal to go, goal to go situations, almost as many as any team in the league, um, but haven't converted a lot of those into touchdowns. What's kind of the key when you guys do get down there, um, you know, to finish some of those? Um, I think that when it comes to goal, goal to go situations, I think that um, I mean, the field is extremely short. I think that it just comes down to every single person on the off, every, every single person on the offense has to execute. And I think that, um, you know, I think that the majority of the time, I'd say 10 out of 11 guys are doing it. But I think that that one, that one out of 11 is like kind of biting us in the ass at this point in time. And I think that just getting everybody on the same page and making sure that we all can, can do our jobs to to, to the best of our abilities. And if we can do that, I think we, we can score a lot more often. Where can the O-line improve the most heading into the Raiders game? Um, overall, I feel like it hasn't, I feel like it, I feel like it's been pretty good for the most part, but I think that we've had a few too many penalties in the past couple of weeks that have been, and sometimes, sometimes they've been drive killers, but sometimes they haven't been, but, um, Overall, I think that that might be it, but I think that, yeah, I'll just say that. That's what, yeah, fine. Pen yeah, don't get penalties, <laughs> I guess. But, I mean, they happen. I think that it just comes down to if they do happen, that you need, just need to keep the drive going and making sure that you can, uh, if you do have a negative play, don't don't let it kill the drive. Just, just keep going, I guess. I don't know. I think I just said the same thing maybe four times for you. Thanks, Grant. Appreciate you. Thanks a lot.